Hello everyone. So in today's video, I'm going to be diving in to the world of Surat. So this palette is actually the reason I'm doing this video. I found this palette from Surat earlier this year and I just haven't been able to stop thinking about it. I haven't been able to stop thinking about the formula, the texture. So in today's video, I'm going to be diving into a ton of different formulas from Surat and trying them for the first time with you all. Surat's a brand I've known for a long time and have dabbled here and there, but this is the first time I'm really, again, diving into the brand and truly testing. They have so many different like cream and powder eyeshadow products that in specific, I was like, I need to try out all of these. So I ended up doing three different looks in today's video. Like this is the last eye look. This was a wild one. So I hope you guys are excited and let's just begin. Okay, first of all, I have to say I'm wearing this like absolutely divine robe today, even though it is like three o'clock in the afternoon. Also the most amazing bodysuit that I've ever worn with this robe. I just feel like I'm feeling confident even going into all of this new makeup. I feel very luxe, feeling like I could afford like Air One or something. So we're gonna first start off with the Dew Drop Foundation from Surat. Now this is a foundation that I have been interested in for such a long time and I just have never gotten around to trying it. I'm prepping my skin with the Ilia Face Base Milk because this is just my primer of choice and one of my favorite primer skincare products I've literally ever used. It is just one of those luxury items that is just like so worth the money to me. There's like a little clicker kind of applicator at the back, which I think means when you open this, just a little bit comes out. Okay. Then I forgot. I, when I was getting everything prepped for this video, I did like a little bit of swatching and I realized that I could not get this open for the life of me. And I just, I don't know if I'm doing something wrong. I don't know if I'm supposed to pull it up. You guys see what I had to do to get this to screw off? I like used one of my clamps for my <laughs> lighting setup and did a little bit of damage to the top of this. Okay, well, so here's what it looks like. Again, pretty sure you pump this out the top like that. I heard this has quite a bit of coverage. So I just want to do one half of my face first. This is the shade three, not like an amazing shade for me, but not bad either. Um, and it looks like it is drying down like the, it goes like a little bit peachy. You can see like as it starts to dry. So just blending that in. Yeah, not an ideal shade for me. Um, just a little bit too pink. This one is interesting. It's incredibly lightweight on the skin. I really want you guys to be able to see this. It truly does not look like I really put anything on my face. I'm gonna see if I can build it up a little bit on these spots, but I am thinking right now that this would be an incredible product for someone that wants something that's very lightweight that you can't really see the product on the face because this is kind of just like melting. I think it looks really nice. I wish there was a little bit more coverage. Like I have some spots peeking through. Here's the before and the after. It has a, it has a certain something though. Like a, a je ne sais quoi that I can't put my finger on. If you guys have used this and you really like it, let me know like your experience down below. When I saw Hot Mess Tom when I was on um, my Creators and Friends trip, they were telling me that this was like one of their favorites. And as I keep applying it, I am noticing that I can just see this being pretty perfect for someone that wants a lighter weight foundation, wants about like a light to medium coverage because you can build it, but you don't want it to look really heavy. So like I can definitely see like combination skin or even oily skin. I think Hot Mess Tom is, has oily skin. I can see you just like super loving this. It's one of those things. So I was just talking about this with the Huda Beauty Easy Blur 
this has the blur and the really nice like just looking like good skin quality and so even though this is less coverage than that in person this looks better because it doesn't have this like very heavy makeup kind of look to it and not that the easy blur really has that when i prep my skin really well i can definitely pull it off but this is definitely more in line with what i want my skin to look like up close and in person i'm just going to tap in some of these areas rather than buffing with the brush and i'm just going to see if i can get more coverage i don't have their concealer I'm almost positive that I found out about Surratt through Karima McKimmy like years ago. And that's when I purchased the eyelash curler, which is like one of the best eyelash curlers out there. I wish that I could have found mine for this video. Oh, yeah, that definitely built better with fingers. I wish you guys could see this in person. But like the more this is sitting on my face, the more I'm kind of blown away by this. Like my my skin has that kind of expensive look to it while it also looking like I don't have like a lot of makeup on. So that's a really that's a really good feeling. But anyway, I think I found out about the eyelash curler first. That was one of the first like luxury purchases I ever made, period. Like eyelash curlers in general were one of the first luxury purchases I ever or luxury um, categories I ever got into, which is so weird, I think. Next product I tried from Surratt was their brow pomade. And again, I'm talking like probably eight years ago. So it was definitely time that I do like a full on let's try this brand video. Now, like I said, I don't have their concealer, so I'm just gonna use the CL concealer. I've just been really liking it. It's been treating me really well. Just tapping that in. It has a similar quality, I think, to the Dewdrop in that it just has a very natural look on the skin. It's not overly radiant, but the CL definitely has more coverage than the Dewdrop. But yeah, I'm really interested in seeing what you guys think of the Dewdrop because this product has been out for a long time, and I think that this kind of finish and this look is very current. Like, I feel like a lot of foundations are trying to get something close to this. Surratt, for me, is known for, like, the eye products. And we're going to talk about the eye products that I have tried, which is this one. And then we're going to dive into ones that I have never tried. But before that, we're going to get into their bronzer. And this is refillable. I really love all of Surratt's packaging. Like, purpley blue, like, duochrome. But it's not over the top either. So I did swatch this and it looked like a pretty nice color, but we'll just have to see how it actually looks on me. This is not the most ideal brush to put on like powders, but I do love it. Yeah, I think this one is probably gonna work a little bit better. This is the A507 from BK, the Angie Hot and Flashy brush, but this is the travel size. So it is a little bit smaller. I absolutely love all of BK Beauty's brushes, but the Angie hot and flashy ones like she did such a good job with them. So let's see what This looks like it does have like a similar appearance in the pan To the shadows like it has that really silky formula. I wonder if this is also a slurry formula that they do Which is like it comes out as a cream and then they bake it. It's very very blurring Do you guys see that? I'm, I'm hoping that it's really coming across on camera, like how blurring this is. The textures are just very interesting. You know, being that like I am trying to get as true of a look at the products on camera for you guys, I feel like these kinds of textures are so subtly blurring and I don't know, they just have a subtlety to them that I'm hoping will come across on camera just because sometimes more subtle and like in general, like subtle makeup products have a harder time coming on camera. So I might actually do a little bit of some natural light views as well um, when I'm finished up filming. Just so you guys can get a better idea of how this is actually looking. It's gonna bronze my neck. I love that so much. 
I love when like first impression videos go particularly well because that just is incredibly, incredibly blurring. I love this color. Um, by the way, this is Sol, Sol Do, Do, D O U X. Incredibly silky. And that's, that's the shade for you guys. Maybe you guys can even see in the pan this kind of like texture that it has when you dip into it. That does feel like a kind of cream to powder thing, even though this is very clearly like a powder. So far, the only thing that I'm seeing that I wish was a little bit different is I have two very dry pimples over here and this foundation doesn't look the best on them. It definitely does not look bad, but it doesn't look amazing either. There's this part of me that just wants to do my brows and keep everything the way it is though. Like I'm so, I'm beyond excited to try out the eye products, but just the, when a, the base is really good, I love doing a very like stripped down. I've just always been like, I'm such a base product foundation concealer kind of person, but that would mean that like we wouldn't even have a video. So I'm not gonna do that. So we have a couple of options for blush. We have the Ciroc Artiste blush in the shade Poncho or Ponso, Poncho. And it's a beautiful color. I picked out this one because I was like, this coral, very me. I love a coral. I also have one of their liquid blushes as well. I am kind of interested in seeing how the liquid might potentially go on top of the powder, but let's see. So I also have the shade Cantaloupe from the liquid blush. This has that kind of similar packaging to the Dewdrop foundation, which by the way is very weighty. This is a little bit lighter. This is, I believe, yeah, this is a screw up. Oh my God. <laughs> And there is the shade Cantaloupe. Oh my God. There's like a really beautiful lightness to this and the sheerness. Like it, it feels almost like a, like a gel kind of skincare thing. You know, maybe at the end, I think I'm gonna go in with Cantaloupe or no. I'm gonna go in with Pon, Poncho, Ponzo, Ponzo. And then I think at the end of my routine, I might add a little bit of cantaloupe on top because I feel like these would also look really beautiful together. So I almost, I have like a very vague memory of having one of these at some point. You can again see the way the texture is. If you haven't used them, you it might be a little bit difficult to like understand what I'm saying, but it, but it does have this creamy look in the pan. It's reminding me of like a brighter version of Creamy Peach from Makeup by Mario, which is like one of my favorites. And I was hoping that this shade would be similar. This is definitely a little bit brighter though. Definitely has like this light silkiness that the bronzer also has. Just gonna take the excess on the forehead. That always helps to make everything kind of like mesh in a little bit. All right, I think it's finally time to do the brows and then we'll get into the big kahuna, which is like all of these eye products that I have to test out. I'm just gonna fill in a touch with, this is the Clio Kill Brow uh, pencil. It is definitely stiffer, but I like that it kind of gives this almost like powder effect. Yeah, I might finesse once I have the pomade in, but for now, let us get into the clear brow pomade from Surat. So there are a couple of things. This is a product that I'm like actually familiar with, so I can so I can really give a review. So the Surat brow pomade, one, the brush is insane. Do you see how it's like all of these stiff bristles and they go straight out? So this isn't like your typical spoolie. And essentially it has this clear creamy kind of pomade in here rather than your typical clear gel. Surat was really doing it before a lot of brands jumped on that. And I'm just going to comb this through. You can see because of these bristles, this like really lifts and offers like this more fluffy kind of effect. That's something that 
pomades do really well. Um, gels can sometimes make the brows look wetter and like there's less hair, but a pomade can really add volume. I mean, think about it, think of it too, like when you have just your regular old hair. Like if you're putting pomade in, you add that for texture and then you add in a gel more for hold. So think of this as kind of like a texture product for the brows. And this was a product that I heard of from Karima, for sure, I know that. And there are the brows. I mean, it's a very soft kind of natural look. I love that the pomade is matte. So again, not gonna be like the best for hold, but very, very good for texture and adding like a volume to the brows. Much as I would love to apply the Beyond Beige palette from Surat, which was the one Surat product that I tried this year that I absolutely loved, I just need to dive into other products from Surat. There are other formulas that I think we have to talk about, but I'll briefly share with you guys that this will definitely be in Best of Beauty for 2024. And it is kind of the reason I wanted to do this video because I had tried this and I was like, we have to try other products. But these do have that slurry formula that I was talking to you guys about. It goes into the pans as creams and then they bake out the moisture. So you're left with this really creamy effect on the eyes that is still powder. So it's going to last longer, but it won't make the eyes look dry. So really, really good for drier eyelids or mature skin. These shimmers are so beautifully fine. So they're very flattering. And this creamy chocolatey matte is so multidimensional somehow. I don't, I don't understand how. Do you see that? Like... It's chocolatey brown, but there's like a touch of a purple and the way the texture looks, it almost, again, it has this creaminess that makes it ultra flattering once it's actually on. And then this shimmer is my favorite. It's not even a shimmer. It's like a satin. This is what I want out of satins, by the way. I personally love a good satin, but it needs to be different. It can't just be like a flat satin. This is what I'm talking about when I'm talking about like a satin I can really get behind because it it's more reflective. But Surat has so many different eyeshadow formulas. Okay, so shall we get into more of these eyeshadows? Uh, the more, by the way, the more that this powder is like sitting on the skin, it's really melting in a way that is very attractive to me. Look at all of these eyeshadows that we could potentially use. And we all know how like, borderline obsessed I am with eyeshadow. So the first formula, and this is the formula I've seen a lot of people talk about that I've been very interested in trying myself. This is the Souffle eyeshadow from Surat. And it has this like really satisfying kind of texture. So here it is, you open it up. Again, you see that? It's like, it's like a Souffle, but kind of like to me almost looks like a gel too, like a jelly. This is the shade Plum Mauve. Oh yeah, this feels like jelly. It definitely doesn't feel like a straight cream. Like it's cool to the touch. And ironically, like there's not a lot of pigment coming off. I'm gonna really get in here just to make sure like we're actually getting the pigment. It's quite wet. I don't know how I feel about that. I mean, you guys know or you should hopefully do by now. I love an interesting texture, but I'm not sure like how this is going to actually apply because like there are some areas where I, I'm noticing it just not wanting to stick even on my hand and it's already drying down. I'm, I'm just not sure that that's really gonna perform the way I want to. But again, this is just like, like I said, first impression. Another product that I have been very, very excited about is the Prismatic Eye. Wait, I do mispronounce a couple of words in this video, and by a couple I mean probably more than a couple. So like, it's supposed to be like Prismatic, not Prismatic. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm watching the video and I'm, it's driving me crazy. So just wanted to jump in here and clarify. It comes with a cream, which it looks like... It's kind of like dried out a little bit around the sides, but it comes with the cream. And then you have 
the sparkle on top. So this is very in line with like Tom Ford, cream color duo kind of thing. I feel like I definitely want to try this one because it just feels like something I would really like. So I'm gonna give you guys a swatch of this just cause we're here. So here is, oh, I put a lot of that out. There's the cream, beautiful even pigment. And it's actually not dry at all. Like it, it has a great creaminess to it, but I can tell that it's gonna last. And then we have the shimmer, which I guess you could layer them and that would give you a very long wear look. Or you could use this as like, I don't know, to frame out the eye and then put this in the areas where you don't have that. I guess it depends, but that is the shade. Oh, that's really pretty. And I'm just gonna swatch it on top. There it is. That's very pretty. I really like that. There is, I can't tell if there's like a, a little bit of pink to this. Like, I feel like there's no way I can get away with just doing one eye look with all this makeup. We also have the lid lacquers, which I have been looking at these for literally so long. By the way, look at how beautiful this packaging is. Like it's wrapped so prettily. It's like, it feels like a little truffle or something. And then here it is. This is the shade Kira Kira, essentially like colored eye glosses. This just, I wanna put this on my face. So that's Kira Kira. Pretty insanely gorgeous. Very, very excited about this shade. Kojeka. Look at how pretty that packaging is. I can't get over it. It does feel very special. The way each are like individually wrapped in this paper does feel very special. Shade. Oh my God. That is just, that is beautiful. Just really interested in seeing how these translate once they're actually on my eyes. And then the last shade I have here is Hadaka. And this is one that I almost, like I feel like has been in and out of my, you know those beauty products that have been in and out of your cart for years? This is one of those. So I feel like a lot has been leading up to this moment because I just never pulled the trigger. Ooh. It's almost, it's kind of like a, like a peat, like a PG beige. Okay, so those are the lid lusters. All right, I have other formulas too. I have like the batons and then I have the single like powder shadows too. What I think I wanna do is use the lid lusters in combination with the powder. I think that'll work really well and then we'll go into the creams after. So I have the shade Chocolate Noir in the mini shadow, very deep. I don't know if I'll use this. This is deeper than I expected, actually. It's a gorgeous shade. I love like the purple to it. Wow. But I do feel like I already kind of have that in my Beyond Beige palette. Like here is this shade. I'm gonna swatch it right under it. Yeah, they're very, very similar. A little more purple to the one from the Beyond Beige, but it is matte. There's no sparkle to it. Whereas Chocolate Noir has a little bit of shimmer to it. And then I also have the shade Zybeline or Zybeline. This one I think we could incorporate because it is a little bit lighter. It could be really nice for the crease actually. It's kind of taupey shade. I mean, I am known for being a fan of taupey shades like this. Yeah, it's very similar to like Half Light from Ritual Defeat. Oh God, that's pretty. Yeah, I think I'm gonna put that all over the <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and put that all over the lids. By the way, if you see any like little bites on my hand, it is because I stuck my hand into a fire ant mound. I just stuck, stuck my hand straight into their house and they were very not happy about it, as was I. This was actually on the creators and friends trip. And I was like sitting in the grass, stuck my hand in the fire ants and then immediately ran and jumped into the pool. And everyone's like, woo, Amanda. No one had any idea though that it was because I was completely covered in fire ants. And then I was like, um, I think I might need some help. Actually, I think Linda, uh, Glitter Fallout, I think she might have a video that she sent me 
of my dress completely covered in the ants. So I still, so if I have that, I'm gonna post it in here. I was like, can someone take a video of my dress so I don't feel like I'm like going crazy right now? Okay, so let's go ahead in with Zybeline. I'm just gonna brush that all over, like really using this as a base. I mean, if you guys have been following me, I'm gonna say like for a year plus, then you probably have figured out by now the way like these shades have made, these shades like make me feel. I just love them. So this was a good choice. It's blending super easily too. That's something I really like about the Surat shadows that I've tried is just like, they blend really, really seamlessly. That's why I'm hoping the creams are the same because since again, like, since my really, really good, oh, this is not the palette. <laughs> since my like very positive experience with this, I just have been so excited to try out more from this brand. Again, it's one of those things, like every time I add a new layer to this look, I'm like, I could truly be happy with not even doing anything else. Like, do you see the way it makes my eyelids look? It's a quality thing. The way like the light reflects on them, it just, it looks, like nice blurred kind of skin. This is going to be a one and done that I put in my bag like immediately after this video. We have to do a lip luster. I just don't know which one. So maybe we'll do multiple. I'm gonna take like a more dense brush in with the shade Kojeka. Kojeka? And I'm gonna add that on the outer corner. Just for this kind of like sooty effect. That's actually, those are actually melting in really beautifully together. They're, again, they're like something between a cream and a gloss be because again, they have like pigment to them, but it's just interacting really well with the powder. This is what I was hoping was going to happen. Again, but without me really knowing, I have, you know, I have really no idea. And of course, as I started doing this, my card ran out of battery and I had to just offload my footage. And then now we're here. This is increasing that much. Kind of interesting. Also, it looks really good in natural light because I just went and checked. But let's go ahead in with another lip luster shade. Okay, well, I think I have to use Hadaka just because like, again, this is a shade I've been looking at for so long that I feel like I just need to see how it actually looks. Oh my gosh, that's pretty. These are very like, I don't know. They are really striking the right balance for me between being like editorial and being wearable. That is very pretty. It's definitely warmer than the other shades I have going on. So I'm not sure if like, I would typically pair all of these together, but just the formula on its own is very, very pretty. And then I also have Kira Kira. I remembered that one very, quickly because I read this book as a kid named called Kira Kira and I always really loved it. And then yeah, that just adds that like wet glossy. This is like a wet glossy glitter in a gloss essentially. That's very pretty. I mean, that's about what I was expecting from that shade, just that like really pretty glossy extra wet effect cuz these gl like the glitters in here are a little bit bigger than the other shades. Like the other shades I don't even think really have glitter necessarily. They have like a shimmer, but this has just a touch more shimmer. That's like a full on glossy eye. I haven't done like a full on glossy eye in a while. I also have this little baton that they gave me and it's the inner light baton. And so you have like this sparkle on one side and then you have like kind of like a cream on the other. So I think I'm gonna use, and this is Mousseau. I think I'm gonna actually, maybe I'll just take it on my finger. See that glitter? And I'll add like a little bit in here. It'll just like kind of help everything set too. Yeah, that looks really good. <laughs> I'm into that. Those are the eyes. This is like the very like wearable kind of glossy lid. Very happy with that. I would typically do now is add like a smoky wing and call it a day but I think I'm gonna take this off because I want to try out some of the other eyeshadows it kind of pains me to do this though honestly because I just really like I really really like that so 
my first impressions thus far. This was my favorite. I love this because you can kind of add glossy dimension to your look. Like I like the full on colors the most because I think they work the best with the other products that you have. Something like this has already kind of been done. It's very pretty, but I love that these add like this really smoky glossy effect and they seem to like hold up on themselves really well, like very surprised by that. So I'm just really excited to play with Hadaka and Kojega again in particular. Like these ones really stood out to me, especially if you just want that kind of like wet glossy effect on the outer corners. That's just like really, really looking pretty. The powder is a blind. Not surprised that I'm like absolutely in love with this. I think the Surratt powder eyeshadow formula and their powders I'm just noticing are very unique and kind of next level. Just very luxurious on the skin and on the eyes. Let's get into the creams. So I gotta be honest here, I'm like not really sized about this souffle eyeshadow. I just, I feel like I have to try it because it's something that a lot of people are talking about. So maybe what I'll do is I'll I'll quickly swatch this on the eyes for you guys, and then let's go ahead in with the prismatic eyes. I just did this. How did I just do that? The dent. Oh my god, the dent in that. I'm so bummed. How did I do that? I just can't not be a messy makeup application person. Like, do you have that friend that they can apply makeup and just like, it's so, everything around them is pristine? Something is always weird <laughs> applying makeup. All right, so let's go ahead and get this on the eyes. I'm just dipping my brush straight in. I'm gonna actually swirl it a little bit. I mean, I'm not really sure how fast this is gonna dry, so maybe I shouldn't have started two eyes at once. So we're gonna do this a little faster. Like it dried really fast on my hand, or relatively fast, so. Hmm. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. Why am I eating my words right now? Why am I eating my words? The, the translucence of this, I think some people will not like because I initially was like, I don't think I'll like that. But the way it ends up applying is very unique in this color. I mean, this color. Let me apply, I think I'm gonna apply some down here just to give you like the full effect. Like, is this not the like sexiest, like grungy purple? And it has again, that kind of translucence. So your skin kind of like shines through. Like, look at that. I'm actually, yeah, I'm full on eating my words right now. I think this is just one of those products that you're going to have to be okay with a more translucent base. I'm going to add a little to my finger to see if you can build it up and like what that looks like because this is just with a brush. I mean, that's really pretty. It definitely builds with your finger. This one is this one is kind of mystifying me because because I think part of the magic of it is that it is translucent, but I think that's also the reason why some people won't like it. It's very lightweight on the eyes. This is for a very specific person, at least this kind of shade. This is for the folks that love that kind of like undone sexy grungy eye like something that almost looks a touch messy but not gonna lie i feel kind of incredible in this there's just something really again like sexy 90s grungy about it that i really really love i don't know if i was expecting this kind of whirlwind this like new makeup try on i'm like i, I don't even really know what to think <laughs> right now these shades are freaking incredible, is what I'm kind of noticing. Like, 
all of these formulas are very unique and all of the shades are very unique. I'm very happy I tried that one on because I was ready to write it off. Just another look for you guys. Like Halloween fall, ugh. That is a good shade. We gotta get into that duo, which I'm really, really hopeful about the duo, even though I just stuck my finger straight into the glitter. And the adventure continues. And this is pretty intense. I wouldn't typically wear a shade like this all over my eyes. So you guys are lucky, because what I think I'm gonna do is go ahead in with the Holy Grail, the Beyond Beige, to just to add a little definition into the crease. I absolutely love this shade and so effortless like this really is one of those palettes where you just kind of like dip into it and and brush it all over the eyes and like it always looks good which I feel like this time of the year is what I'm often looking for so you guys can kind of see the way that performs and then for the actual eyes I'm gonna take the cream shadow and I'm gonna use this as like a wing and I'm gonna do kind of like a You'll see. I'm gonna do like a softer wing and then I'm gonna kind of carry the color out a little bit more. So you see like how I'm carving a little bit? I'm using the angled brush to kind of carve out the wing and then I'm gonna take a smaller detail brush to kind of blend this out onto the rest of the lid. That was like super easy to blend. You see that? So it kind of just adds like this structure without it being like a full on wing. I'm actually surprised that this formula is as blendable as it is. Cause it, again, I was just worried that there was, this was gonna be like really pigmented and very creamy and, and very deep and like a little too smoky for me, honestly, but this isn't giving me that. This is a little bit easier to work with and it's a little more flexible. So I don't know yet if I wanna do like something smokier or if I wanna keep that edge sharper. So I think for now, I'm gonna go into the other side. Like, do you see how, like, do you see how creamy this is? It really, I just, I guess I wasn't expecting that. So same thing, I'm like drawing out the liner, kind of connecting it. And again, I don't have to be like really precise with it because it's gonna take it and blend it onto the lid itself. And then just blending that out and then I just keep going back and doing the same thing until I'm really liking the way that the shape is looking I have a feeling that these are gonna last really well though just based on the texture it looks really nice I think I think now that I'm feeling a little more confident I'm gonna go in with like the fluffier pencil brush and use this to add the pigment like I wasn't sure how much pigment there was going to be there and now I'm feeling a little bit more confident to get a little bit more on there I just feel like every look that we've done with the Surat shadows have been like a different version of a really pretty like bedroom eyes all are very like bond girl in their own way this one I think is very versatile, a lot more versatile than I was expecting it to be. I mean, honestly, I just, I'm impressed, I'm impressed. Okay, but let's take a look at the glitter because we all know how I am with glitter. I'm so sad that I freaking dunked my finger right in there. Now on camera, it's kind of shifting way more pink, which is not really my favorite. I mean, it is pretty. It's, I don't think it's the right, or I don't think it's a color that's my favorite though, I'll be honest. I really like the formula, it's very lightweight, it's translucent enough, like everything about it. I think it's just a shade thing for me. But I think a lot of you will really like it, <laughs> like in the, on the same, like the other side of the coin though is that like I think a lot of you will really like it. I'm just gonna take a little bit more of that cream shadow. And, and deepen this up and maybe do like a very, very soft wing. Yeah, I think maybe I was expecting this to be a literal pot of liner, but it's not. It's like a just a matte cream shadow. I think I want more depth to that. So I'm gonna go into the Beyond Beige palette 
and add like that depth that I'm looking for. So I'm just gonna use this darkest shade and go into that wing and deepen it up a little bit. Yeah, that certainly delivered <laughs> what I was looking for. And then same thing over here. You see the way the powder catches on the cream eyeshadow too? That's how you get a really long lasting cream look or vice versa. Like it really does. It is a really nice way of achieving more longevity. I think I did more wing than I was expecting now, which is fine, which is fine. I'm gonna take a little bit more of that baton and add that to the middle of the eye. Yeah, I really like that shade. I think that like made it a little bit less pink, which is again, probably my preference. And before we get into their mascara, which is like very infamous, I think I am gonna add a little bit of cantaloupe now because I think it'll go really good with this um, shadow. So let's see how this layers on top of all this powder. I thought this had a scent, but I don't think it does. That's actually very sheer. Oh yeah, no, I do remember saying that this was really sheer. I think that might be a little bit too sheer for me. Like I like a little bit of sheerness, but it might be just a little bit, a little too sheer. I'm also noticing that my brows are starting to drop a little bit. So like, even though I'm getting texture from the brow pomade that I really like, you know, I, d I am missing, I think the lift that I get with a gel. Okay, so let's go ahead and curl the lashes. I wish I had the Surratt Lash Curler to share with you guys. It is so, so good. It's one of those metal wand mascaras. It's also like refillable. Oh wait, this is the liner. Where's the mascara? Oh my God, I don't think I have the mascara. I guess that means that we gotta put on some liner. <laughs> guess. I guess the wing was in the plan all along. I mean, this is a very fine calligraphy pen. Oh my God. I don't even know how that happened. Admittedly though, like I'm so into my smoky wing now that I don't know if this is really like going to be something that I reach for a ton, but I will say the formula is very black. The tip is very thin and flexible, and it is like a calligraphy style, which is, you know, my personal preference. I'm just gonna like smoke it out just a little bit though. But you know, that did add a lot of richness. And now we have like tw two like <laughs> full on wings going on. Like, I don't even remember the last time I wore this much eyeliner. And you know what? I'll also like, I'll take down my hair. We'll do a lot of mascara. We'll we'll get it to work. We'll get it to work. I'm gonna put a little bit of the Han brow gel right in the front to give me a little bit more lift right there. Cause that's where I'm missing it. I just want it kind of in the front. I don't mind if the rest doesn't have as much lift. We're gonna do a bit of like a high low moment. And I'm gonna add the the luminous panorama from L'Oreal Long, because I just picked this up this week. I've been wanting to test it. Like this gives a lot of volume, so it'll be good to test this one with this particular eye look, because it's really delivering on the like very long black lashes. Actually, yeah, I'm really glad that I went in, grabbed this one. This look might even benefit from a couple of like individual lashes, but I just can't, I can't be bothered to do that. But actually this mascara is really perfect if you do a lot of like cat eye looks cause it really like draws the lashes out like this. I don't know if I was expecting this eye look to be the one that I landed on at the end of the video, but I'm not gonna lie, I'm actually really liking it. Like I think, I think the pink and gold deserves a spot on my channel and I don't have to just do topes. So I'm just gonna line my lips. I think I wanna do like a really easy lip look. These lip conditioners from 
uh, Physician's Formula are just so good. I don't, I don't know if I like this shade with this. We're gonna redo. Okay, I'm gonna go in with Twist from Say. I just want, I want a little bit of shape. I don't want to do like a full, full liner look though. And then let's go in with this shade. This might, I think this might be better. I'll leave the shade down below because for some reason it's not showing me. All right, everyone, and this is the completed makeup look. There are so many different products that we tried on today that I'm kind of like, where do I even start? But I think let's start with the products I'm most excited about, and then we'll get into the ones I'm like not as excited about. So obviously, number one, you guys already know I love the Beyond Beige palette. This is just one of those all-in-one, throw-it-on-the-eyes kind of palettes. That's why I love it. I love the way the quality looks on the actual eyes. Just, I love the way it makes my skin sing, but it also is just so easy to apply and work with. As far as new products that I tried, the powders from Surratt just are really, really impressing me. Like, I think I'm even going to add a little bit more blush. I, I just love the texture. The texture is really really pretty. The foundation and the bronzer are ones that I'm immediately excited to try again. The Dew Drop foundation is just so freaking thin on the skin and I just really want to keep playing with it. The bronzer just feels like an instant favorite that I'm just going to want to reach for it because again of that really easy to work with powder formula and the shade is really nice too. I have so much blush that I am sure I'm going to use the bronzer more because I have less bronzers but I just keep wanting to apply the blush. So I don't know, you know, that usually is a good thing. Like when I want to keep applying it, that usually means I really, really like it. Okay, but I digress and I need to stop putting on makeup. The duo that I have on my eyes right now is very pretty. The gold pink thing is not usually my favorite, but I'm not gonna lie, I think it looks really pretty. Like if I was going to reach for one, ever it would be this one especially because i really like the formula of the glitter the cream shadow is also incredibly blendable like i wonder how this look would have turned out had i just taken this and put it all over my lid and then added the glitter right on top like i just imagine that being really pretty too i would be interested in seeing other shades of this and the liquid liner Again, I wasn't expecting to do like such a strong wing, but the liquid liner is like obviously insanely precise and very, very pretty. But I do like to smoke mine out, which is why I smoked it out a little bit. But you know, a lot of people like that liner for a reason. I'm excited to see how it wears because it's like uber, uber black. And again, I really like that you have the top and then, and then you have like the actual refill. Like you can refill this and you can see it is stocked with that liner in there. Just very luxe and I like the refillable aspect. Zibeline, the single shadow, immediate going into my everyday makeup bag because this is so perfect just to put straight on the eyes all over and be done. I think the chocolate brown shade, chocolate noir, I'm less excited about. The lip lusters are beautiful. These deeper shades, I think, are doing something really, really special. And I know they have another shade because I saw Simbri wearing it. And I kind of want that shade too. But <laughs> but I have two beautiful shades. I don't need any more. And again, I see myself more so using this in combination with a powder shadow to add kind of like this smoky grunginess. Then, this one was the wild card. The Souffle eyeshadow in and pluey mauve. This was wild. The translucence of it, but it could be built up and it's like grungy, but kind of translucent. And I don't know, this one is the, this one surprised me the most. And it's the one I'm the most intrigued about. And I feel like I have unfinished business with this one. Like I'm really excited to see the footage of it too. In person, I thought it looked like a really beautiful, again, like grungy translucent, kind of eye that I, I thought looked really nice. I don't know where the mascara is and that's gonna bug me since I, you know, have it. I have it somewhere. And I will say the brow pomade, I think, again, good for texture, but 
I do have some clear brow gels now that add texture as well. Like, so I don't know if I would necessarily really want to reach for this anymore, which is kind of a bummer just because I love the wand so much, but I think I might've grown out of this one. And as far as the liquid cheek, I think it's a little too translucent for me personally. Oh, is this, oh my God, there's a pink shade too. How do I, oh, that's very bright. That, that probably wouldn't have gone with my look, but yeah, they're just, I, I appreciate a translucence, but maybe too translucent for someone like me that like really, really loves blush. I think I lean more towards recommending the powders because of this kind of creamy melt on the skin formula. Well, this was a wild one. I'm so happy I did this video. They're coming out with some really insane formulas. I'll leave everything linked down below. I'm pretty sure I still have a discount code too with Surratt from earlier in the year. So I'll see if it's still active, but I hope that you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for being here. Now see you all in my next one.